Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance channel. Uh, I've got a little different format today. I wanted to do this uh, five undervalued stocks video. However, I'm running short on time for the day. So instead of editing and going through all that crap, I'm just gonna go and do it live. Let me know what you think. Uh, there is a chat board on this one. Hopefully it'll show up in the recording. Make sure you guys say hi and um, you know, I'll try to get to the questions as quick as I can, but I am going to go through this list uh, just because it's promised, right? Five, five stocks on sale. So let's jump in. You can see the very first one on here, Boston Beer Company, Sam. This is a stock that had a bad earnings report on a couple levels. Let me make a quick adjustment to the screen here. And I have some familiarity with this industry because I actually own uh, Coors, Molson Coors Tap uh, and the beer industry as a, as a general baseline has had a lot of upheaval lately, not only because people uh, are not drinking as much beer in favor of things like uh, hard alcohol, different lemonades and ciders and stuff like that. But the one company that hit hard was Boston Beer with their seltzer, which is uh, Truly. And Truly was really the only significant competitor to White Claw in the seltzer segment. And it really carried them through uh, COVID as far as like just amazing growth through COVID. Uh, now in their most recent earnings report, they came out and they saw some weakness with Truly Sales, they also saw some weakness with the growth of the seltzer market. And as you can probably imagine, if you haven't been to the convenience store or the grocery store lately, we also have seen quite the uptick in seltzer competition. So the question is with Sam, after getting just destroyed here lately, this is your year to date chart, your high in April was gosh, 1250 now you're down to 677 after the earnings you went from about 950 down to 677 and it's tanking another five percent today so is this a stock on sale and i would argue yes okay you've got a couple things going in favor of boston beer uh right now the first outside of the the drop in price Got a P ratio trailing 12 months of 35, EPS uh, just under $20. And if we take a look, actually, let's look at this first. Switch to annual. Uh, so this is historical valuations, um, trailing PE of 37. It's a little bit higher than what we saw back in normal times, 17 and 16. Uh, the forward PE of 34 is also technically a little bit higher, but this is a company um, that once we get into the analysis, you're going to see right here, earnings estimates. Last year, $15, this year, $25. Next year, approximately $33. In fact, the low is 30, the high is 38. This year, the high could be 26-ish dollars. So this is a company that's growing EPS at a pretty uh, decent clip, to be real honest with you. That's going to balance out this stock price over time. Then we look at the revenue estimates. So as much as they uh, were fretting about revenue, you still have estimates coming in at plus 45% this year. Um, and don't forget that we just got through, what, let's see, Q2 would have been April, May, and June, okay? That's not exactly peak season uh, for outdoor events. Obviously, things were getting back to normal. You had spring break in there and so on and so forth. Really hard to tell through the Q2 earnings where the summertime demand was for Truly. And I'm sure that if you dig deeper on this stock and you get into maybe some consumer packaged goods reports, you can probably tell how things are going, but I would argue that July through September, is that right? July, August, yeah. July through September, which is Q3, uh, would have the biggest potential 
for a seltzer resurgence. Now, with that on Sam, I'm gonna say two things. Uh, whenever it was $1,200, that was way too much, okay? And uh, so now you're down into the 675 range. Um, I think you're right about in a good buying range. It could actually go lower. But if we look at these sales numbers and we save 45% this year, uh, potentially plus 25% next year, this is not a company that is like so many other COVID uh, trick shots, if you will, for stocks. Like it has momentum into next year as well. So let's take a look and see what folks are saying on tip ranks for the best performing uh, excuse me, analysts. Try to squeeze this in. So we just had a horrible, right? Arguably horrible um, earnings report. And you've got hold, buy, hold, buy, hold, buy. So we'll stop there. How many do we have? Uh, and then you actually have a sell. But in all cases, you've got 29% upside, 90% upside. I don't know who put 1281. I think it's probably a little ridiculous. But over the 12 next 12 months, I mean, could I see 750 to 800 dollars uh, as assuming that uh, beer sales continue to rebound? Absolutely. So Boston Beer Company, uh, ticker symbol Sam, that's our first undervalued stock. I'm going to stop for a second, and say hi out there to Kevin Hawthorne. Thanks for coming out. As always, DH thinks Hood is going to 80. Why not? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to be in. Frankly, I was surprised that Robin Hood um, kind of fell flat on its face. I, I sort of thought that that one was going to take off. All right. Next stock today is Digital Turbine. And uh, I've had a couple of people bring this one up to me um, on live chats and whatnot. And it wasn't one that I was initially watching. Uh, but I've tried to dig in a little bit more. And basically what you have with Digital Turbine is an opportunity to market and monetize apps and not just any apps, okay? So not the kind of apps where like I make something stupid like, a, a, you know, that nobody wants, right? Just like an independent person in my basement, I make some snake game or something nobody cares about, right? I'm talking about like, Chick-fil-A. I'm talking about like Domino's Pizza. Um, big, big players use this platform uh, to help push their app so that it gets downloaded and used and com combine it with offers and whatnot. It's very intriguing. I still haven't completely wrapped my head around what sort of moat they have, to be super honest with you. Uh, but what we're seeing here with apps right now is another, it, this is a company that's in a high growth world and it's basically flat as a board uh, since, let's take a look. Bring this up. It's been flat uh, basically since May 15th. You did have some run up here, uh, but it kicked off a high in February when the rest of the market was high. You're at 93 little roller coaster ride here, but it's certainly a stock that can hit the 80s and 90s if good news and headlines come in. It is profitable. P ratio is a little high at uh, over 100, but that's trailing 12 months, right? Let's look at our historical valuation scale. Forward PE of 35, okay? Now, Way back in 1617, probably before they built their client list, you did have opportunity to get it lower back then, as well as arguably uh, March of 2020. But of course, that was when the market uh, tanked. So I don't know if you can use that number either. Uh, I'm going to say comparatively, this 36 uh, versus last year and versus 19 does look a little cheap. And then on the peg ratio side, uh, under one is super strong. Price to sales of 19, not so good. 
Uh, but let's see what the analysts are talking about. All right, here we go. I'm trying to balance the screen. I'm not trying to give you a headache. I'm just trying to get it out of this little window that has my big grill in it. Uh, a year ago, EPS, probably non-GAAP here, uh, 74 cents, doubling this year on four analyst projections to a buck 50, next year to 221, then sales growth this year. And I think this is what's happening with apps. Uh, you have plus 255% this year, going from 300 million up to 1.1 billion, at least projected today. Then next year, you got 1.44 billion, but that drops to a 30% growth rate. Now, 30% growth rate is not horrible. It looks bad compared to 255%, but let me just tell you that if Microsoft, for a bad example, moved the needle by 30%, I mean, the street would be going crazy. But this is a much smaller company, so the expectations are higher. Um, but when I look down here at this EPS trend, 90 days ago, 93 cents. Now you're up to a buck 50. Next year, they've almost added another dollar to the EPS. So uh, as far as consensus revisions go. So I like the momentum here. I think there is a little bit of coin flip in this one because the earnings are coming up. Let me see when that is. That's an important part of what we're doing. August 9th, okay? So almost a week from yesterday. Yeah, Tuesday of next week. Let's take a look at tip ranks. Scrolling down. Two days ago is our most recent update. We had several others that happened about two months ago. Let's just take the last three, but keep in mind this one's 60 days old. This one's 29 days old. Bye-bye, triple digits, projected to be over the next year. So whether or not it hits triple digits, I'm not 100% sure, um, you know, and nobody is, just to be fair about that. But you, I think it, what I would say with Digital Turbine is this. You do have an opportunity right now technically to make a play before uh, the earnings next week. Almost for sure I probably won't buy in at this price myself because it, I have other targets that I want to do. The reason I do these videos is because I look through stock uh, lists all the time and I'm just calling out some of the stuff I see. But dig into this one if you're interested, if you're intrigued by what they do, which is mobile app monetization and promotion, try to get a feel for how this quarter could shake out because if they come out uh, big in this one, it could go off. But there's the flip side, right? Which is a potential miss. And then you're probably still stuck in the 60s again. It's really hard to tell, but it definitely shows up on the radar as a stock that is potentially undervalued, particularly if they can continue to march towards their goals. All right, check in on the community here. Uh, Mr. Mohan, what are your thoughts on Enphase? Um, I'm holding out of Enphase temporarily, um, perhaps longer. Solar just got a shot in the arm though today. I think you probably did well. Uh, infrastructure spending, yes, that's going to be a part of the game. I'm temporarily holding out. I think solar stocks are, are hitting. They're, they're a roller coaster, right? And I personally am not buying solar when it's at the top of the hill. I want uh, the next iteration of bad news, which is not bad news for the long term. I mean, solar is going to make strides. It's going to take longer than a lot of people think. Uh, but, you know, uh, congratulations, because I think they just did a great, um, a great bump up. Ten percent plus Solar Edge is in there too. All right, uh, next one on the board is, and this one's been discussed quite a bit, Pinterest. So you may know if you follow the channel that I had a relatively bearish, not even bearish. I, I sort of had a meh. 
uh, take on Pinterest a couple months ago when it was breaking out. And, I, and I, it's not that I think the company's bad. In fact, it, it's doing very, very well, but it, it was just overpriced in my opinion. I put a price target of about $75 or $80 on it. And then lo and behold, they came out and had a good quarter. Had, I mean, if this was a lemonade stand, these guys were cranking out the lemonade, right? But of course, user growth uh, is one of the Achilles heels of any technology stock, any sort of internet stock. Uh, and they got dinged on user growth in the US. Now, the bright side for Pinterest from a fundamental standpoint is the story is still good, okay? Because when you got into the nuts and bolts on earnings per share, uh, this stock is now cheaper significantly than it was two weeks ago, right? So let's switch it up to annual. Here we go, forward PE, which is about all that matters anyway, 63. Last year at this time, you're at 97. And late 2019, when this whole thing started with Pinterest and they had their monetization plan and their growth plan, 208. All right, pay ratio, not registering for some reason. Price sales of 16, roughly half of what you saw in December. Now, on the analyst front, year ago, 42 cents. This year, 91 cents. Frankly, I think it's probably going to be a little closer to a dollar, if I had to guess. I, I think that what people forget about Pinterest right now, uh, particularly in Q2 uh, with the world reopening, is they're going to have a strength in Q3 and Q4 as we head into winter uh, temperatures and, God forbid, whatever's going on uh, with these variants, right, on COVID. So, uh, Pinterest is an indoor game, and we are in the outdoors and sunshine. I think, you know, some, some categories will still be strong, such as makeup, uh, wedding planning. There's a lot of outdoor decor on Pinterest as far as inspiration goes. But you're really like hot, hot items, which are going to be um, food and shopping and interior home uh, you know, renovation type projects, those are going to be pushed a little bit. Those are going to come in around fall. Um, and, th and they're going to have a, a strong fall in the winter, as far as I could possibly tell. And next year, the, the growth story continues. I mean, this is basically, if we just go on consensus of 91 cents, and you look ahead to next year, well, then that's plus 50%, right? Give or take. Uh, so they're headed in the right direction from a profitable business. Revenue estimate this year. And this, remember, I let this settle down. I didn't come out. I'm not saying this the day after earnings. This has been about a week or so, right? 53% is still where the consensus is on revenue, and that's against the COVID year. So pretty darn good. Next year, plus 32. And this is the game... This is what I called out on Pinterest two, three, four months ago. It's not a user growth platform. It's not a user growth platform. They still have international, and that's fine. Um, I personally, if I, was, if I owned Pinterest as a company, they're doing the right things. They are, they are profitable. They are making money with their ad revenue, with their sponsored features, all those things. I do think the platform is going to suffer from uh, flat to, you know, maybe double-digit growth, aka 10%, across international. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing if your ad CPMs go through the roof, right? Now, it's going to look stupid compared to, say, Roku uh, with the growth of streaming, but at the end of the day, you've got a stock here that, for all intents and purposes, looks like the earnings per share uh, are going to help keep that price going. I think, though, unfortunately, or fortunately, you're going to look at 60 to $65 for quite some time. Now, I, I have an interest in Pinterest. I almost pulled the trigger because I own Etsy. 
And most, if you know, if you own Pinterest, you know that a lot of uh, advertising on Pinterest, uh, or let's just say a decent chunk, is folks who advertise their Etsy goods. So I was like, should I play this? Should I bounce these two off of each other? Uh, but at the end of the day, I didn't. However, under sixty dollars, I don't know. It feels it feels fair to me. Uh, certainly, much more fair than what a lot of people were projecting for this stock, which would be like a hundred dollars or something. I think you got another year ish before you get to that level. Let's take a look at tip ranks. Squeeze it in. Got several updates because they just had earnings, which is a good thing. And let's see, mixed bag hold at 68. That's still a uh, plus 13% hold. As you guys should know, if you bought, they're saying the world is not falling. Hang on to your shares. Then you got three buys in the neighborhood of 70 to 75. Another hold at mid 60s. And finally, a buy at 75. So I think there's upside here. I think that uh, bottom line, if you will buy Pinterest for the one year plus, and I'd probably say you want to, you know, a year from today is, is August, right? If you're going to make it that long, you might as well go through Q4 uh, of 2022, because that's going to be a boon time for them. Uh, just the nature of their business, Q4, holiday shopping, blah, blah, blah. So let's just say you hold Pinterest for two years. I think it's a really good price right now at $60. So keep it in mind. All right, let me pause for one second and, and check on the comments. Uh, a couple stocks I don't know. So I'm going to skip technically. Um, Crocs. Yeah, I don't know a ton of those. I'll get to your questions, though, but let me hit what was promised which was of these five undervalued stocks. Here's another one. You wanna play on uh, gambling that hasn't been beaten down yet? Las Vegas Sands is right there. Um, the reason that I picked this one is, uh, that I think it's obvious what the turnaround story is from COVID time. But what a lot of people don't know about Las Vegas Sands is that their uh, Macan presence, okay? So you hear a lot of people talk about when, when resorts and what's going on in Macan, which is where, you know, the high rollers of the high rollers go. Uh, okay, when is not a bad stock. Uh, Las Vegas Sands owns more, I think, in Macan. I think they own 50% of the market share. Uh, of available hotel spot uh, rooms in Macan, okay? And they have a long-standing license there. So if you buy Wynn because you think Macan is going to be awesome, and I said Macan, I meant to say Macau, sorry. If you bought Wynn because you think Macau is going to be awesome, then you should be buying LVS right next to it. And this is one that I'm strongly considering because it hasn't seen the travel rebound that some of these other ones have. Uh, let's, let's go through the same dog and pony show here. Earnings are going to take a little while with these travel stocks. Um, yeah. So right here on these metrics, forward P and stuff, it's garbage. It's still not there yet. Um, this price to sales is trailing 12 months. You're, so we're not going to see a ton here. Mostly because I think, and let's just let's just jump right to it. You're looking the the market uh, websites, right? Like like Yahoo, their forward PE is still playing the game of 2021. I can tell you that for myself and for many other long-term investors, 2021 may as well be over, right? We expect certain companies to do certain things. Um, but the look ahead window, uh, for most of you should really now be 2022. Okay. Because there's already projections on 2021 and granted, uh, your companies could fall short or exceed those expectations, but you probably should model yourself out for 2021 being all but over in, in my personal opinion. 
So let's talk about 2022, because regardless, if you're a long-term investor, you're holding LVS for at least a year, right? You're looking for long-term capital gains. So 2022 is right in your wheelhouse. You got two, excuse me, last year they were negative. This year, call it flat to zero. Next year, though, you've got a 237 to a 323. That's with 13 analysts. It's not just a, you know, a dart throw. Um, so with that, your forward PE in my book is less than 20, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go back to this chart that looks horrible. So this looks horrible, right? But we're gonna do a forward PE of 20 based on analyst consensus. And you're right at fair value, you know, based on previous metrics. And that's not even gonna be 100% for LVS, right? 2022 isn't gonna be 100% capacity. I just like where this is going. Call it a three-year hold if you want, but I think you're making money uh, certainly after 12 months. Let's see what we got in tip ranks. Do, 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 same deal. Let me scoot it in. 13 days ago. Uh, I forgot to see when their earnings were. Okay, roughly mid-October. You see that? October 19th. So we got a little while. Uh, here you go. Buy, hold, buy. Holds at 53. That's 32% up from today. 60, call it 65 to 60 on the buy side. So plus 80, 60, 50%, whatever. It's simple math. Um, now, what are, what are the risk factors with LVS? I mean, I think it's money in the bank for the long term, but there's, there is the risk factor that we're all watching on the news today, and that's, uh, of course, Delta, right? There's another risk factor out there that says LVS, uh, underperforms in the short term, further dragging down their estimates for 2022. It's always a possibility, but at least what we can see today, factoring in 2022, LVS is in a decent spot, if you ask me. All right, last one, then I'll do some questions. Also on the chat, if you don't mind, um, give me a heads up. What do you think about this live uh, five undervalued stocks or whatever we're doing today uh, because I've never done one live. I always record them in advance and, and do the editing and whatever. So I thought I'd put myself on the spot and just be like, boom, I can rattle this out. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, if it's a cool change of pace, if you like it better, whatever. Uh, even if you hate me, that's okay too. Uh, you won't be the first person. All right, Amazon. Seems like a weird undervalued stock, but trust me, I really do think it is. And I just did a video, a longer video on this yesterday or the day before. Current price of $33.66. Let's go ahead and skip right ahead to analysis. 70, so 2022, I, and you know, I'm expecting Amazon to continue on through 2021, right? I'm expecting that there's no surprises in 2021. We talked in my previous video about their capital expenditures, the, 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 the low, uh, lowering of free cash flow to further build the business. You obviously have the Bezos uh, retirement, resignment, whatever it is uh, from CEO. So whatever, Amazon's on a rocky road in a weird way because they're printing money uh, right now. But let's just say they're flatlining, right? Between 3,000 and 3,500. I've been big on this one since uh, targeting 3,000, 3,100. That's where I got in. Um, and if we look ahead to that EPS, consensus EPS, which typically in Amazon goes up over time, Guys, $72 earnings per share. I mean, you know, that at $3,500, that puts you at a 50 uh, forward PE, right? 
if, 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 if we do all that math, if you got it at a 54 PE, which I'm calculating ahead of what Yahoo is, you are definitely beating what other people have paid before you. And that's assuming you're only going to hold for a year. Um, so I like the take here. I also like this. You know, boo-hoo, Amazon's not growing 300% anymore. Guess what they are doing? Approximately 20%. Uh, you know, 27 this year, 20% or so next year. There is a small uh, dent in the armor, if you will, on this year e EPS, although it doesn't show here. Um, I'm con more concerned about 2022. 90 days ago, that EPS was 66. Today, you're inching towards 73. And think about that for a second. That's 90 days. That's three months, right? you gained $6 of EPS uh, for the 2022 projections, which would come in on approximately February of 2023. So where do you think those are gonna end up when we're here in August of next year? Well, assuming that Amazon continues uh, its trajectory, which, you know, retail's one thing, e-com, retail, whatever you wanna call it, that's one thing. Don't forget about AWS. Don't forget about the advertising revenue. Don't forget about the um, sort of flywheel effect of Prime membership and the video and all the shit that they're making with that. I, I mean, is it not going to be $80 projected by the 4th of July next year? I mean, I don't know. I, I think I'm skipping ahead to that point. Uh, long story short, you can watch my video if you're interested, but I'll skip to the chase. My target is $4,200 for Amazon by February. Sorry, I'm trying to type this in. It was either $41 or $4,200 by February of the upcoming year, approximately seven months away. Here's what other people are saying who are, you know, arguably smarter than me. Three buys, this is all five days ago. Bye, 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 42, 43, 41, 5,000, 41, 41, 44, 44. So that's plus, let's just say it's plus 25%. Plus 25%, you know, in an era where some stocks have went up 200% or whatever, like I get it, some of you, that's not for you. Uh, but plus 25% is way better than any sort of savings account uh, or, or other risk-free investment that you can get. And I would almost call Amazon risk-free. They're not in China. Yes, there's regulation, but there's plenty of heads to chop before it gets to Amazon. Um, so, you know, take it or leave it. I call it an undervalued stock. All right. Switching over. Big face now. Gonna look at the questions. Um, let me get a drink. That was a lot, but I got it all in. All right, I'm gonna go to Mr. Mo Han again. Actually, stopping on Carlos Amores, and he's asking about OBSEVA. No idea of that one. Just a reminder to save you some time. Uh, I don't do much of anything in biotech and I, medical biotech and then penny stock is going to be right there with them. I, is this going to be a combo? Uh, Switzerland. Biopharmaceutical company, penny stock, this, I, I can't even comment because it's just way out of anything that I would invest in. All right. Uh, now, movie muscle, OSTK, sounds familiar, but I can't think. Oh, Overstock. Okay. Let's take a look. Haven't looked at this one in a while. I remember Overstock having a decent value proposition as well um, last time I looked at them. 
I mean, you got eight bucks a share, uh, trailing 12 months, which is nice. I don't know how their new, um, their app is doing. They have an app that is essentially like crypto trading. There might be some other things in it, but it looked pretty intriguing to me. Uh, I don't know how that's performing. Now, earnings estimate. What is the disconnect here? Because we have EPS of $8 on the main screen. We have buck 24 looking at 215 and 254 for the next two years. Um, double digit growth rate, which is good. Let's get to the bottom of this. Uh, try seeking alpha. All right, last quarter's earnings, 650, beat by 580, upcoming quarter's earnings, 47 cents. This must have been a one-time uh, benefit of some kind. Sometimes companies sell investments uh, or otherwise make stock changes that uh, bring about a lot more revenue than expected. I'm, I'm speaking out of my butt here because I do, I do not know what happened. But it looks like you have a one-time event that will, uh, I'm guessing, not be comped next year. Fiscal period ending, this is estimates. Uh, five analysts. Consensus is 265 this year, forward PE of 25. So your forward PE arguably could go up. Uh, I'm not sure how that would happen necessarily. You got some weird stuff going on with EPS. Let's leave it at that. So that's going to influence your stock price. On the probably revenue, which is arguably um, just as important with an on online retailer, you have two uh, consecutive years of double digits. This is an outlier because you only have um, two analysts. Sorry if you couldn't see it. Here's your two years of consecutive double digits. Forward price to sales gets below one. So that's a positive. I think what you've got with overstock right now is a very odd, potentially very odd trailing 12 months P ratio that will actually go up over time. Um, that's my first glance at it. Let's see what the other analysts are saying. Now yeah, you got buys, at least on uh, tip ranks. I don't know enough about it. Six days ago, 120% upside. 66% upside. Let's see what the news is. All news. Do, 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 overstock. See if we can get anything uh, good. I don't really see any headlines that suggest just craziness. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't have anything to add. Um, looking for a headline that might suggest something we don't or I wouldn't know. Don't know. Interesting. Worth uh, investigating more, absolutely for sure. Uh, Crocs. I think it's had its run. But it's a good company. And it, I mean, had its run, I think it's like probably fully valued is, is I guess would be my take. So it's not that um, I wouldn't say don't buy or bad stock. I'm just not sure what's left in this one. Next year you get to 650 on earnings. How's the growth looking? Yeah, see next year... And I get it, this is analyst consensus, but you're starting to fall under double digit growth. They're still growing, but you know, the pandemic with um, at home as well as medical personnel uh, sales who, who use a lot of Crocs, 
Uh, here's your annual valuation. I think the peak was last year. So you're already trending a snidge higher, smidge higher than 2019. Um, your trailing PE is lower than your forward PE. Price to sales is getting up to 5X. It's not a bad company. I would look for a dip in the short term because I could see it going down. I was just trying to get a feel. So yeah, you guys, uh, you can't really see this. See if I can scroll this down. Now I can't. Bottom line, you are way above your 50 day moving average. Um, you got an RSI of 75. It's a little too hot for me. Um, just, you know, but who knows? Maybe it keeps riding. I would say that you're fully valued and at any price at 137 or above, you ha it, every time it goes up a notch, you're increasing your risk to the downside over the next 30 to 60, 90 days or until they have a spectacular headline, which is even harder to project. Do, do, do. Thoughts on PayPal? Love it. Um, PayPal video will come out again. I have a zero concerns about what Square's doing. I also own Square, so I, I ended up buying Square because of Cash App, and I just did not uh, want to be, miss out on that potential opportunity that could become uh, in the market for PayPal. I would say that PayPal and Crocs, maybe they're one and the same in the sense they're fully valued. Uh, Square is uh, arguably overvalued. And please, uh, if you haven't started a position, I don't recommend that you start today. I think you'll have uh, some opportunities to buy lower. I will be following up with PayPal video uh, probably in the next couple of days. Could you analyze Zillow? Coming, it's going to be a longer video because I really want to buy it. And I think we're getting close. I wish uh, it would go certainly under 100. What do we get to today? They're going to do an earnings call. That'll be interesting. I'm either going to get it for under 100 <laughs> after this earnings call, or it'll probably fly away for a while. I just think like with Zillow, and I, I don't have all my remarks kind of prepared based on the research that I typically do, but um, Zillow is profitable. Zillow is in more markets than Redfin. Uh, Zillow has um, a more uh, broader lines of business than like Redfin. And I think that it's, I think that it's a buy and hold long term. I would like to get it under $100. Uh, that could be $99.99. Um, I, I do, I'm glad you brought it up because I got some thinking to do. Do I want to buy it at 105, the sort of close enough? Because uh, I've been waiting for a while. Or should I just take my chances that they'll, they'll blow something on earnings call and uh, it'll go down? Eh, I'll have to think about that. Do, do, do. Live is good. Thanks, Lou. I thought about selling Square for PayPal, but I don't want to pay it. Psh, I believe, you know, Lou was talking about um, selling a, a good performer to buy a different good performer. And I think he nailed my uh, personal take, which is I don't want to pay the taxes. And that sucks to, to sell Square. You know, it's running hot. You would rather maybe have PayPal. They're both kind of running hot. Square way hotter though. Uh, and he's right. You don't want to lose money to Uncle Sam for two investments that at least in the next 24 months, they're probably going to run neck and neck. I mean, I think PayPal is a clear long-term winner. Uh, PayPal versus Square, it means the absolute clear as a bell winner. But... Square has the opportunity for more impactful growth on their bottom line because they're smaller. So 
Um, I think, you know, not that you do it for me, but I think you made a good choice, Lou. Uh, impressed by Fortinet. Derek's buying all the Intel stock in the world. No downside. The downsides are baked in. Man, um, why not? If you can, I would say, like, if I bought Intel, and I thought about it quite a few times over the past six months. If I bought Intel, you better do uh, three to five years, right? And I and Derek comes on the channel quite a bit, and I... From what I know, he, he's long-term investor. You got the dividends. I saw somebody else. I did an Intel versus AMD, and I just said short-term. I, I just don't see why you would buy Intel, um, or excuse me, yeah, Intel over AMD. Now, at today's price, what did AMD end up at? 110-ish? Let me just peek. I'm not going to go through all the everything because you can go watch the video. So AMD now at 112. Um, now we're starting to get hot. Uh, you know, I, I would not buy AMD today at 112. Uh, how does that compare to Intel? What I projected for Intel is flat for a couple years. And so if you're um, Derek and you're going to buy all the Intel in the world, I think as long as you know that you're in it for... 18 plus months, uh, then you're good. I mean, America needs Intel to start making factories and start start getting our supply chain off of the China side. So I have no doubt that um, Intel will get some incentive to go for it. Uh, I just think in the short term, 12, 24 months, I think AMD probably has more um, upside, if nothing else, than the momentum. All right, Baba. Um, what can you say? I mean, Baba's there for the taking. Can you handle the dark cloud of China potentially interfering? Can you handle it? That's the only thing you have to ask yourself as an investor. I don't typically invest in Chinese stocks. In fact, I just don't. Um, but you have to look at Alibaba and say, holy cow, you know, should I be buying the dip? And I mean, October last year, you're at 300. Let's, out of curiosity, I wanted to see their sales. Yeah, plus 20%. And it's just going to keep, and that's plus 20% at $143 billion, by the way. It's not like um, I opened a lemonade stand and made a uh, buck 20 today instead of a dollar yesterday, right? This is real money. So I don't blame you, Lion, if you go for it. I just don't think I, I would, I, I just don't think I can handle it myself knowing that any day I wake up, there's some stupid headline that has nothing to do with anything and it kills my stock. Enrique likes pins for weddings and events. I have four weddings, holy mackerel, four weddings in the next three months. God bless you. Um, I like weddings, but uh, that's a little overdose. Lion selling his rocket, don't have the patience. I've thought about it a hundred times. Um, they did a little solar announcement yesterday, and I thought the momentum crowd might pile in on that. Um, you got earnings coming up, Lion, very soon. Let me tell you when. Might be next week. I thought it was next week. And not announced yet. August 31 to September 7th. So what you're probably going to get here is... Um, better than expected results, typically, because I think the, um, you know, two things happened that were very obvious. Number one, interest rates are back down to February, January, February levels. And then also the vast um, overcalculation of the real estate market crashing. Uh, I think, you know, there's some positives with Rocket, I'm holding for longer, I think, but I can understand what Lion says. Uh, that would be one that's different than the gentleman 
who was talking about selling Square for PayPal, right? Because if he sells Square for PayPal, he books a gain, pays taxes on it, and goes into another one. This would be booking a loss, which can be mildly advantageous from a tax uh, standpoint in America. Because you book a lot, let's say you lost $2,000 on Rocket when you sold it. Um, you get that $2,000, you get your money back, so you get your core investment, you book $2,000 loss, and you take it over to another stock that grows 20%, um, you're probably coming out ahead. I'm not that far yet. The other thing, Lion, to keep in mind, um, I'm not trying to talk you out of selling because I get it. This freaking Russell 2000, dude, like what? That, that thing has just been tanking. I would at least give yourself a shot on these small caps bouncing back. I don't even know if Rocket's in the Russell. But small caps are taking it on the chin, absolutely for sure. Just, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, chest dad, hoping Amazon dips some more. 4K in 2022, I agree. Um, you already have a decent amount. I don't have a decent amount. But, I, you know, if there's more people clamoring about Amazon's limited growth or growth slowing, I'll be all on it. Spotify, not one I would buy because I'm not convinced of the moat, but I do know it's gotten hammered. Let's take a look. This is year to date. So you had a, this is now a year. Valentine's Day 364, down to 217. What are we talking about? You know, may be profitable next year. Um, not everybody, you know, Spotify is going to be a revenue story, right? Nobody but me cares about profitable. But just remember this when you're looking at it. If you got, this is a, about an 80 cent mark, 80% growth year over year, if they hit it, right? So now let's just pretend that's zero. And, and they didn't lose anything. They're zero or they're a penny, whatever you want to say. That's a forward, a year and a half forward PE of 200. Not terrible, but it's going to take a while, right? You're probably three or four years away on Spotify. And then on the growth, plus 20% uh, the next couple years. Now, that's a nice chunk of change, man, $12 billion. Um, I don't know, it's not for me. But it's it's fair to say that if you bought it today, you're doing better than um, <laughs> the guy who bought here at 364. But I would say that it's a fake discount. Uh, I would say that it's, you know, this person unfortunately paid very high. And now if you're getting anything at 217, I would argue that you're getting closer to reality. Price to sales, 4X, not terrible for, for a gross stock, but I don't know, man, I'd get greedy or maybe average down if you can. All right, guys, it's 4.30, I gotta run. I'm gonna hit Lion though. If, if Apple's X dividend date is August 6th, does that mean if I have 20 shares, I'll get the divvy for 20? Yes, that is correct. So is that, I don't know if you're using like real terms, but yes, X dividend date of April 6th, you have to own the shares uh, essentially by on that date, right? Like my understanding, uh, and feel free, maybe Chess Dad can chime in because it's, and uh, our Derek, my understanding is that on this day, they do a shareholder of record search, right? It's of some kind. I don't, I'm sure it's like automated on a computer, but that's, so you have to hold it on this date. It would be my understanding. And then after the sixth, if you sold it, you would still get the dividend. See if anybody types something in on that. Give it one second here. 
Um, but anyway, guys, this week I'll go back to uh, going to get dig into PayPal. Um, I do need to do a rocket update as well. Uh, but if there's any stocks, larger cap stocks, large to mega, uh, that you want to see some price predictions on, I am, I've started to build my list on that. Uh, so just leave a note in the comments. And uh, otherwise, thanks everybody for coming out. It's a good show. Glad to see you. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Bye.